been today from you. Um, I look forward to those long rides with you and Coach Harden where we talk about all things sports and some things political. Um, I, I just hope, Paul, that you will find your own way to stay very engaged in the activities of the school district. Um, you would be welcome and we would all be honored to have you walk through these doors to have lunch with us from time to time. And it's my great privilege uh, on behalf of the board and on behalf of all of the staff to give you one parting gift that we hope you'll hang on your wall. And I'm going to read it to you and then I'm going to let the board officers hand this to you. And it says, Washington County Board of Education, Mr. Paul W. Bailey. On behalf of the members of the Washington County Board of Education and the entire team of educators and staff, we thank you for your leadership, commitment, and dedication to Washington County Public Schools for more than 54 years. We are honored to stand next to you in your tireless service to our children and their families, November 18th, 2014. Dr. Hardings. Bailey, the floor is yours. I'm not sure where to begin. Very kind words. Perhaps not all of them deserve, but uh, thank you for them anyhow. And uh, I really do appreciate everything that everyone has done. Uh, this evening, I was more than surprised, shocked, uh, when, you, when I was told, you know, I needed to go to the cafe uh, that uh, a reception was going to be held there and many of my friends and former colleagues uh, took the time to show up. That was a tremendous impact on me and uh, made me nervous but I love seeing them. Uh, if I could, I'd just like to take a couple of minutes and I'll try to get through as quickly as possible. I know we're running long tonight. Uh, I'd like to thank those people who sent me here for four terms, the citizens of Washington County, uh, the trust that they placed in me, I think uh, putting their children in your care and uh, so forth is is a very reward, it was a very rewarding experience for me. Some have asked where did the motivation come from for you to get into the education profession and I'm going to tell you very quickly and by the way uh, Dr. Hardings uh, Right after I was promoted to director of middle schools, I lost my wife 22 years ago. And I only wish that uh, she would have been here tonight to share this high moment with me. But the motivation, certainly part of it came from her, but prior to that, it came from my father and mother. I was born right at the end of the Great Depression 1934 and my father kept telling me that uh, I needed to do much more than I needed to prepare myself for the future and not to do what he had to do and so many youngsters at that time just followed their parents and what was happening at the age of 13 he went to work in a coal mine and uh, died in at the age of 78 with black lung as a result of the coal mine experience. But it was at the Great Depression that uh, taught so many uh, values, I guess you, you, I would want to say. And I said, Dad, what, uh, what do you think I ought to do? He said, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but you know, during this Great Depression, I, we just came through um, and this was at age 14, 15, 16, after things had so settled down. Uh, he said, when we were 
manning soup lines at the Great Depre in the Great Depression, I, didn't ever, I never saw a teacher have to come through those lines. He said they were employed all the time. He said, think about it. So I did. And uh, I didn't have the money to go to college with, but uh, at that time, the state of Maryland was offering a scholarship type thing where if you committed two years uh, of teaching, they would pay your way through college. I jumped on that and was also supported by the, a friend who was on the GI Bill who bought most of my books and took care of me. So I have so many people to, to thank. But uh, I'll move on. My son and my daughter were at the reception tonight, both teachers, one a kindergarten teacher, one a physical education teacher. They have two, my son has two children. My grandson is working at Williamsport High School in the special needs area. My granddaughter will graduate from Salisbury in the spring in the field of education. So it just keeps going down, 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 so forth. Um, I've been asked, who, who, who helped you? during your early years. And I'm going to quickly say Mr. Richard Wisner was my mentor and uh, took me through the ropes of education. Great man, great man, wonderful man. Uh, the next question, you know, what are the highlights of, of your term on the Board of Education? And to narrow it down to just uh, a few, uh, you know, I've, I've really uh, enjoyed the academic success that our students have demonstrated over the years. Being recognized in national magazines, being recognized as, as a state that has accomplished a great deal in education, uh, no more, not a greater reward th than that for me. Uh, I've been here with the, in the development of four elementary schools new buildings plus uh, the one to be built at West City. Uh, the BISFA school is built in this, my term, the Antietam Academy, this facility. Uh, the renovation at South Hagerstown High School took place and the one at uh, 701 uh, Frederick Street which is going to offer students of special uh, interest uh, a great opportunity. I also have felt uh, in many of the uh, comments that our president just made in regards to our superintendent, I was so pleased to be on the panel that selected Dr. Wilcox to come to Washington County. That was one of my highlights, indeed. Uh, there are others, you know, you, you, you present ideas and you hope that they happen right away, but a lot of times they don't. We had athletic trainers on the board for 10 years or so, thinking about them. I always advocated for them. You wait, you receive. We got the athletic trainers. So that, that was a, a, a big uh, highlight for me. I, of course, you know I'm a sports fanatic, but the budget for uh, interscholastic sports when I came on the board was $40,000 for the entire system. It has increased sixfold since that time. And uh, I uh, felt very proud of that. I was part of the committee that came up with the committee process that we use uh, way back when, three, three superintendents ago, and he was opposed to the committee. But we fought through it and uh, we came up with the committee concept that I think is well received by this administration and staff that work with us on that. Uh, 
course, I mentioned student achievement. And, you know, I've learned that being patient, sometimes uh, things don't happen as quickly as you want them to happen. But if, if you're patient enough, you advocate for it, those things can happen in education. And that's something that I have learned. But I guess the, um, and, and let, me, let me just change course here for just a second. I can't go without recognizing North Hagerstown High School girls on the, their volleyball, cha volleyball championships three out of the last four years for this county to win state championships. And then I look at another class of students, the, the Boonesboro, or the, excuse me, the, the rivals, the Smithsburg girls volleyball team, four out of the last five years. Proud of them, you know, that, that's been something that I always enjoyed. And uh, I'm gonna recommend that you folks have them in here and recognize them like we have in the past. Uh, yeah, um, President Harding's mentioned that sometimes no one would ever admit it, but I think they got annoyed with me when I would say, that's a former student, or I had that student. Uh, that has been one of the greatest thrills that I have had in my tenure recognizing students that have uh, been in school where I've been and I've gotten to know them. One of my goals as a principal in school used to always be uh, to know every student's name by the time they left in the eighth grade. Uh, I don't think I ever totally accomplished it, but I came darn close most of the time. And I know these people, and I know most of their names. Uh, I went into a, a, a shop yesterday to buy something, and the guy turned around and looked at me and said, Hey, are you Mr. Bailey? I said, Yes. He said, I had you in 1966 at Boonesboro High School. I said, Well, you'll have to give me your name. <laughs> so, you know, and that, that happens all the time. The other day here at the board office, uh, there were 18 or 20 guys. I don't know what they were doing here. It must have been a workshop or something, but they were leaving, and I held the door open for them out in the lobby, and they went by, and two of them said, Mr. Bailey, I'm your former student. Uh, so if that doesn't make you feel good, I don't know what will. It, it's been great uh, doing that. And I'm going to try to wrap up here very quickly. Uh, you know, this is a bittersweet moment for me. Uh, I'll get over it. Uh, but I like to recognize uh, those former students, a lot of them. Just a brief sampling of them. Pediatricians in this community that have now retired, I had in school. Many nurses, many, many nurses. One three-star general in the United States Air Force. Numerous lawyers. The head baseball coach at Texas Christian University, Jimmy Schlossnagel, who is, has taken his teams to the World Series in college baseball. A professor of chemistry at Johns Hopkins University. Many elementary teachers, good number of principals, and VPs. And I know many excellent mothers and fathers who are raising families. A lot of soldiers. Two were lost in Vietnam that I had occasion to be part of. The sheriff of Washington County, is, current sheriff, is a former student. The chief of police, city of Hagerstown, is a former student. Uh, the commissioner of the Missouri Valley Athletic Conference, 
as a former student. My dentist is a former student. The mayor of Boonesboro is a former student. Two people on this Board of Education, I consider Wayne one of them, Melissa the other, were part of my responsibility at one time. Uh, there, there are others that go on and on and on, uh, but I would like to mention one of the nurse nurses is the supervisor of nursing at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. So our people get around. We do something for them. We have provided them something to uh, go out and be educated and make a contribution to their communities. Tony, to you, uh, that academic cheer may not work, but uh, think about it. And I will close by simply saying, as I depart tonight, the hay is in the barn. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. There are no other comments. We are adjourned. Signy die.